Hey everyone, welcome to my studio. This week on the St. John Mosaic, I am hoping to finish up the banner. I did not outline it or do this scroll portions. The tail and definitely get started on the sky, maybe finish the sky. So I think the sky will be the fastest part because the tail will be more feathers and they take a little bit of time. And these little finicky parts on the scrolls take a while. So yeah, I don't know how far I'll get, but that is the goal this week. And my sky is ombre from this light blue to uh, more of a cobalt up at the top. So down at the bottom, it's gonna mostly be this color. And then these are my tail feathers. This is my outline, ready to go. I'm going to finish this lovely sunflower, which I have made the mosaic on this side, but not yet grouted it. I want to finish the mosaic on this side and then grout it and then do beads on the edge again, like I did on the other one. And this one, I mainly want to use this iridized glass tile that I have that's really pretty. But I'll be adding some other oranges and reds in. I have a bag over here, maybe some of those, maybe some of these, we'll see. Before I do any of that business though, I am going to start a new mini. And what I'm doing is making a background and then I'm going to make a mosaic on top of a flower arrangement. So here's some of the backgrounds. I want you to look at the backgrounds here. I've got some mini vit and some vitreous copper streak in this one. This one, I use copper streak that I cut and some blue copper streak. This one, I use some, looks like stained glass tile and some mirror tile. So those are some of the ones that I've used, done in the past. This time I am going to use this tile. And if you ask me where I got it, all I can say is in my studio, I had this container, no idea where it came from. They're a little bit bigger than the vitreous tile, but I'm going to combine it with this white vitreous tile. And because these are a little bit bigger, I'm going to cut them down before I start. That's it. Just doing the background. now using black sanded grout and I'm actually using an admix liquid instead of using water because I think it will strengthen the grout and help it help prevent the effervescence. I never did seal this particular one and then I ended up I'm not going to use the um, waterproof grout that I thought I was going to use. Instead I'm using regular sanded grout so I added that fortified admix and then surprise surprise someone donated a whole bunch of high fired ceramic pieces to the place where I work. And I very quickly put this together. It's kind of cool. There's dragonflies, butterflies, little bugs all over it. Very earthy. So I'm going to grout this one at the same time. I ended up using Thin Set as the adhesive for this. This one I used silicone as the adhesive, but I'm using the same black grout for both of them. Here I go. So these stepping stones are ones that I just purchased and they have a little bevel on the edge. So I'm gonna put the tape right here on that beveled edge and I will grout right up to the tape.
came out so nice. I do need to let the grout set up a little bit before I do a final cleaning. But look at this one. Really beautiful, a different earthy thing than I normally do. I'm so grateful for the ceramic artist that donated all these pieces. I certainly didn't make them, but beautiful high fired pieces, high fired glazes and clays, just wonderful to work with these colors. And it's gonna look beautiful in the garden. Two different ones. I love the monarch too. Monarch looks so good with the marigolds. I have some zinnias here too. Great. This big magnolia tree and it drops ginormous leaves. It's very difficult to get things to grow, but I do have some ferns and hostas and somehow this just looks perfect right here. Near the ferns and hostas. That's it. Time to focus on St. John. Sit bag had a blowout, so I'm going to stop for a minute and work on this. I'm just going to be scooping it out and putting it on there until I can close it up again.
grout my sunflower and I'm going to be using white sanded grout. This happens to be Mape Caracolor White. And I'm going to be adding colorants. So I have my water, everything's ready, I'm masked up, and I'm using colorant brand colorant. So I'm hoping to get some new colorants soon, but I still have quite a bit of this, so I'm not gonna let it go to waste. And I just wanted to show you my highly scientific method of mixing the color. So the grout that I'm using on this one, I want to be yellow and I'm also going to be adding this terracotta in because I want it to be a little bit darker than just the yellow. And I think that that terracotta will show up pretty well, uh, all things considered. But I'm going to start with yellow and I'm just going to mix it in the water. Very scientific. It's called the eyeballing tap method. And uh, I'm just going to mix that up. Now my water is this brown terracotta color, and I'm going to add in the dry grout. The reason it's important to be so scientific with this is that I'm going to be mixing thin set also, and I want the color to be close. It's too thin. It's an animal dry. don't like that color at all. So I'm going to add some more terracotta. And yellow. Now, if you were going to make this as bright as possible using these particular pigments, the ratio would be uh, 10 parts this to one part that, one part colorant. But I'm not getting close to that really. So. Uh, that's better. It's a little bit richer. I'm going to add a little bit more and make it even more because it's going to dry a little bit lighter than the color we see here. And I don't want it to be too washed out. There, I like that. I think that'll bring nice contrast to the project, so I'm gonna let that flake. I'm gonna add a little bit more, then I'll let it flake. While I'm waiting for my grout to slake for this, I'm going to be using a pre-mixed Spectralac 1 grout in natural gray to just grout this little project. Since I don't have to wait for it to slake, and it's such a small project, I can just knock it out while I'm waiting. Love this grout, it's so easy to use. Any crowbar tool is perfect for getting that last bit of grout out of the corners. And I'm going to let this set up and then I will clean it off and then it should be good to go. up as before. I've got some 
strong bins propping up this sunflower. I've got my color thin set in a bag and I've got some beads and I'm going to be piping on the thin set and then sprinkling the beads on and then tweezing any that are loose or any spots that are empty and making sure that they're all filled before I turn it and do the next section. So I'm gonna do one quarter of it at a time before I move on to the next section. That's it. the other side. I think what I really need is a third one that's a little bit shorter. That's it. Found an old piece of Raku and cut it for my vase and I've glued it on there a little bit earlier today. And now I'm gonna make some more roses and this time yellow roses. So I like this yellow with the white, but I like this one because it gives it a little depth and this one has some texture. So I'll probably mix all three of them up. And let me get after it. Think. Do you like it? I don't think she'd rather chase squirrels. A little recap is in order here. I did not touch the sky on this one, but I'm going to focus on it intensely next week. However, I did finish this beautiful monarch stepping stone and this high fired ceramic stepping stone in earthy tones. I also was able to finish one side and grout and put the beads on this double-sided sunflower garden steak and make this mini dozen yellow from start to finish. That's putting it together. Thanks for watching. See you next time.